behind me, the beautiful desert landscape. And what do you think of when you think of deserts? People would be surprised if they looked at this area to, to find out there was millions of acre feet of water in this area. What we've been uh, asked or tasked to do with the Cadiz project is to describe how much water can be pumped uh, from the uh, groundwater basin uh, that's behind me here uh, on a sustainable basis. How much, how much water recharges the basin on an average annual basis over the long term. Cadiz is, a, uh, is basically a water supply project to provide uh, water to, uh, to communities that essentially don't have the water uh, locally uh, to meet their needs. Cadiz is located uh, in the eastern Mojave area. It's uh, approximately you know, 50 miles or so from the Colorado River. It's north of the 29 Palms, Palm Springs area. So it's east of Los Angeles several hundred miles water cycle or the hydrologic cycle in this area is a closed basin. starts from the higher elevations in the form of rainfall or snow. It melts and trickles down within the soils. Uh, then becomes groundwater. Once the plants take what they want from the, from the uh, rainfall, makes it into the rock and then makes its way to the subsurface and then moves from the edge of the watershed from those mountains into this uh, alluvial sand and gravel type material. If you reach down and pick up some of this material, this is what it looks like. It is sand and small rock fragments. Significance of this for water is that it's not solid. There are spaces between the sand grains and the rock fragments. Up here in my hand, these are filled with air down in the subsurface beneath my feet. They're filled with water. At this spot, there's over a thousand feet of this material filled with water. And there's different rock types uh, below the subsurface. There's two principal rock types. One is what we call a carbonate uh, rock, which is, if you just look at it, it looks like kind of like concrete but it's been dissolved uh, over uh, the historical geologic time such that it's full of holes and becomes very transmissive. So we wanted to see if that was the case, and so we drilled what we call test well one into that rock type to see if it indeed uh, has a lot of the like cavernous materials, so like caves if you wanna think of it at that because that's what it is. Uh, does that exist in the subsurface? In November of 2009, a video camera was dropped down, well TW1. In the middle is the depth in feet beneath the ground surface. And then at 329 feet beneath the ground surface, this is the level of water in the well. That's the level to which water rises in the well. It's called the water table. We're continuing going down and then found beneath sands and gravels is this material. It's a rock, and as you go down, you can see there are pits in the side of it. This is the limestone that has been dissolved. Here on the side, you can start to see cavities. Uh, you can think of them as many caves or conduits, as close as you're gonna to get to a pipe in the subsurface. This is a very large one, and this can deliver a tremendous amount of water to the borehole. This is one of the reasons when they pumped this well, they didn't even observe the water level to drop. Water can come in faster than they could possibly pump it. And we've encountered numerous features that would contribute greatly to permeability. In fact, if you just hit one of these features in a well, you've got a humdinger of a well. And, and finally, at 1,000 feet, there is still water. This is a unique aquifer system. Of course, every aquifer system is unique in its own way, but this is just tremendously productive. Uh, based on 43 years of experience, I've been involved in literally hundreds, possibly thousands of drilling uh, projects, which included drilling, constructing, testing, developing water wells. And without a doubt, 
TW1 is the most prolific uh, production well that I've ever been involved with. What we're doing with, uh, with the Finner Gap area is developing a numerical uh, groundwater flow model, which is a representation in mathematical terms of the groundwater basin. Uh, that model will help us compile all this information in terms of the drilling and testing and groundwater level measurements, uh, integrate that information in order to estimate what the flow is through the Finner Gap and it's basically state of the art. These recent studies have confirmed our, our early uh, suspicions that there is a vast amount of water flowing in aquifers in this area. And then we did a totally separate soil moisture budget uh, model uh, that the uh, United States Geological Survey published back in uh, 2008. So it's a, a, a recent model that takes a little different approach and then we also had a lot more data and information available in order to apply that model and update those estimates. I'm always amazed every time I come out here at how vast uh, this, uh, this watershed is and uh, how, how large of a, of a basin it is. It just takes you literally a couple of days to, uh, to drive around it. And so the, uh, uh, the basin uh, itself has a tremendous volume of water and storage and I guess I could uh, probably easily uh, uh, compare that to something that someone uh, might be familiar with as a surface reservoir. And if we take uh, the Metropolitan Water District's uh, Diamond Valley Reservoir, which is about 800,000 acre feet, uh, this groundwater basin uh, has in it uh, something like 20 times uh, that storage on the small, small end and as much as uh, closer to uh, 40 times on the uh, upper end. This is a renewable resource, and the reason is water that is removed from the aquifers by pumping is replenished using natural recharge and imported water, water that's brought in and put in basins just like these behind me. Cadiz is, is really, uh, could be an important part of the resource mix uh, for water supply to, uh, to Southern California. This could really be just another uh, component of that portfolio of water supply to really help uh, assure the long-term water supply of the region. And I think if it's used in a sensible manner, it should be sustainable indefinitely.